Canine parvovirus is a highly virulent pathogen with mortality rates reported between 9% for aggressively treated dogs and 91% for untreated dogs. Stated another way, there's only about a 10% survival for dogs that are not treated. This 9% obviously is for dogs that are treated very aggressively. And certainly dogs that are treated less aggressively would have lower survival rates. The standard of care for treatment of canine parvovirus involves hospitalization, intravenous fluids, IV antibiotics, and additional treatments such as antiemetics and nutritional support. Unfortunately, hospitalization can be cost prohibitive and may influence owner decision towards euthanasia or attempted outpatient treatment. The objective of this study was to prospectively evaluate if the study outpatient protocol could be used in clinical cases of canine parvovirus enteritis and if dogs treated with this protocol would have similar clinical response compared to those managed with an inpatient protocol. As far as overall success of the inpatient group, there was 90% success rate or survival, uh, so 18 of the 20 dogs survived to discharge. As far as the outpatient group, when um, you know considering whether you simply need to cut costs, ultimately uh, it is worth trying this outpatient protocol um, because these dogs actually did much better than the investigators initially were suspecting. They did tease out a few important things. All the non-survivors from both groups weighed less than four kilograms, so these are quite small dogs, all the non-survivors. And all four of the outpatient failures and one of the inpatient non-survivors was four months or less. So this would suggest that we have to be more aggressive with smaller and younger dogs and bigger, older dogs may have a bit more resilience to surviving parvovirus. Overall, there was no significant difference in the protocol success, the duration of treatment, or the quality of clinical recovery between these two groups. I don't want to take this as a blanket statement that it's okay to treat dogs in an outpatient setting. This always needs to be a discussion with an owner that it is better for the vast majority of dogs to be in the hospital. But in cases where costs or family considerations are a big concern, then, then the outpatient protocol could be um, considered. Uh, the results of the study suggest that this protocol could serve as an alternative to standard in-hospital protocol. That doesn't mean that other protocols could. So. We don't want to say that it's appropriate for every dog to go home. Um, we don't know if every eight hours or every 12 hours of treatment would be the same results. And in fact, it's likely that they would not. This protocol required really diligent monitoring and follow-up, and I want to stress, by a veterinarian. They were seen by a veterinarian and given a physical exam and laboratory work every 24 hours. And this, if you consider an outpatient protocol, you should be recommending 24-hour rechecks. Don't just send them out the door with a bag of fluids and say, good luck. Say, let's see your puppy back tomorrow or your dog back tomorrow. And this is to ensure that the patient is responding and does not need further interventions. Also important to remember that both protocols utilized an initial IV fluid resuscitation, heat, and glucose support before randomization. And these likely contributed to the relatively high success rate in both protocols. Without these, this outpatient protocol would likely have had a much worse outcome. Uh, Dr. Holohan? Yeah, so I think that the treatment of parvovirus as an outpatient basis is really still a controversial subject. Although I certainly understand, you know, we don't all have the plan A option available, and there are clients that are not able to afford that plan A option. However, we see parvovirus in a wide range of clinical aspects. And so we do see some parvo puppies that come in that are still pretty stable. You know, they might be lethargic, they may not be eating as well, but those are the patients where I feel that client dependent, if they're not able to hospitalize that patient, I think outpatient therapy is, is very appropriate. However, you have to pick the right client as well, right? You have to have that client that's going to keep you informed, that's going to let you know what's going on, if the puppy's not doing well, and if the puppy's not eating within 24 hours or, or 48 hours, they're getting that puppy back to you for evaluation. But 
there's a couple modifications that we have done to try to get these puppies on the right foot if the client's not able to financially hospitalize them. And so those things are, what I worry about with that article is that there are going to be some clients probably, but more clinicians saying, well, it can be done, you know, let's do it. And then they're choosing the wrong patient population to work with. Because I, I really feel like even though there's a plan A, there's always a plan B, C, and D. And if I can try to talk to the client about maybe doing plan B or plan C, because I know that those plans are going to be more likely to increase the success of our treatment. Because, you know, some of those puppies that come in, they look great. 24 hours later, they're on desk door. You know, they, they're so dynamic. Yes, we, we've all had cases like that. And we know that there's a lot of dogs that we do absolutely everything for and, and they simply don't make it. And then there's other ones that you um, don't think they will. I've, I've certainly um, seen it. And uh, I think this gives us some really good information as far as what could work in an outpatient setting as opposed to giving it a blanket approval that it's okay to treat parvo patients as outpatients. Uh, still, the, the best standard of care is to hospitalize the patient um, unless there's some really extenuating circumstances.